Hello and welcome to the first of two videos featuring a case study for endangered built heritage which highlights how easily us humans are capable of destruction and neglect towards heritage in times of crisis. These videos talk about war and the dictatorial regime that at times through neglect at other times actively tried to erase an important part of built heritage by deeming an entire social class as undesirable. But it is also about people that fought against this kind of destruction, even if they were only partially successful. The case study is about the 20th century past of Banffy Castle from Transylvania, a multi-ethnic historical region located in Romania. Throughout the videos, we will talk briefly about the geographical context and historical evolution of the castle. After that, we will touch upon events from the Second World War, which will be followed by a longer section discussing the castle's fate during the communist regime. And, completing the story, comes a brief presentation from the 1990s. Buffy Castle is located in Bonsida village which is found at an approximately 30 kilometers distance from Cluj-Napoca, one of the most important cities of Transylvania. The region is defined by the wide Sumash River Valley lined with low hills. Given the geographical characteristics and the proximity of salt deposits mined throughout the centuries, the region has been inhabited since ancient times. Bonsida had been the property of the Banffy family from 1387 until its nationalization in 1948, when it became state property. In 2007, it came once again in the property of the family. This is the western facade of the castle's main residential building during its heyday in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. We will not dwell much on its past. Let's just say that its beginnings are uncertain and it gradually evolved throughout the centuries, encompassing various architectural styles. The earliest stage of its evolution has been recorded in writing in the early 18th century, based on which we can reconstruct, at least theoretically, how the various buildings looked like and functioned throughout the later period of the 17th century. Through several interventions and expansions, the castle evolved by the early 20th century into a beautiful residence surrounded by a large park as well as a vast estate. To sum up, why is this building ensemble so important? It is one of the largest and most important noble residences of Transylvania. It was home to one of the most important Transylvanian noble families, some of its members being governors of Transylvania in the 1700s. It has evolved throughout several centuries since at least the 1600s, featuring grand architecture in the styles of the late Renaissance, Baroque, Classicism and Gothic Revival. It also had a vast French garden created in the 18th century, which was transformed into an English garden in the 19th century. Thus, it gained the name the Versailles of Transylvania, which was coined in the 19th century. This is the castle in 1997. By this time, it has lost some of its building parts, as we see. Almost all of the buildings stand without roofs, and most of it is in a highly ruinous state, with many of its vaults having collapsed. But how did we come to this situation? To explore the answer to this question, we need to go back at least to World War II. At that point, the owner of the castle was Count Miklos Banfi, one of the most prominent members of Transylvanian aristocracy, who also contributed greatly to cultural and artistic life through his literary and fine arts activity. From his writings, we know that he cared deeply for the concerns and fate of Transylvanian society, and he considered that his personal circumstances came with a heavy responsibility for the welfare of all. We also need to look at the political situation of the time. I already mentioned that Transylvania was a multi-ethnic region, but at the same time it was also a region that could give rise to strong national and political sentiments. 
prior to World War I. It was part of the Austro-Hungarian dual monarchy, following the First World War becoming part of Romania. During the Second World War, Transylvania was divided into two, Northern Transylvania being ceded to Hungary and Southern Transylvania remaining part of Romania, in accordance with the terms of the 1940 Second Vienna Award. Bonsida was part of Northern Transylvania, where during the war, a military hospital and a deposit of sanitary supplies functioned in the castle's main building and connecting riding school. In October 1944, the German troops stationed in northern Transylvania were forced to retreat in view of the advancing Soviet and Romanian troops. Before leaving, first they looted the castle, after which they set fire to the main building and the connecting riding school. The reason for this was probably the clear anti-Axis sentiments and actions of Count Miklos Banfi prior to this date. According to local testimony, the castle burned for weeks and was looted several times, including by some of the locals. In December 1944, a group of archivists from Cluj visited the castle to assess the situation, as the building ensemble held the family and estate archives, which they intended to transport to a safe location. The archivist describes some of the rooms as follows. Everything was underground, wet and dirty, with muddy boot prints, mixed with horse hair from the upholstery of the furniture, with glass and porcelain shards. The leather or fabric covering of the furniture pieces was torn off and taken. Even the stripped furniture was stolen. The windows were broken, their glass shards scattered on the ground, mixed with archival papers. The door and window cases were also carried away. In the extreme cold and draft, the archival material needed to be collected sheet by sheet and put in a bag for delivery, together with a pile of letters found in the yard soaked through and frozen. By March 1945, Northern Transylvania returned to Romanian administration, which was confirmed by the 1947 Paris Peace Treaties. After the instatement of the communist regime in Romania, the process of collectivization or nationalization was set in motion, comprising of several acts that gradually confiscated lands, assets and buildings from the so-called oppressive middle and upper classes. One of the most egregious acts was adopted on the 2nd of March, 1949. This was the law on the expropriation of 50 hectare estates and model farms. This meant that 6,258 estates and 4,456 manor houses were nationalized. And on the night from the 2nd to the 3rd of March, over 4,375 families and over 9,000 people were forced out of their homes and relocated with interdiction of leaving their newly assigned places of residence, which were in many cases in miserable conditions. Count Miklos Banfi was able to clear his name. However, he was forced to live in a small, unheated room of his former town residence in Cluj, being treated as a social pariah. He was unemployable due to his social status and he was forced to sell all of his valuables to stay alive. As his health declined, he was permitted to leave the country and rejoin his family in Budapest, where he shortly died in 1950. So what happened to his castle in the meantime? The archives of the National Heritage Institute in Bucharest documents the fate of the castle during this period, up to the late 1970s. From these documents, which were researched by art historian Ioana Ruskakovian, we find out that in 1948, the castle was described as already in a state of ruin, especially the northern, burned-down part of the ensemble, which was abandoned, lacking function and protection. Later, the property came into the use of the Ministry of Agriculture, which installed here the Bonsida Agricultural Machinery and Tractor Station, later called Agricultural Machinery Station, part of the local collective farm. However, already in 1948, 
the Cluj Chamber of Agriculture, asked for an authorization to demolish the castle for construction materials, and in July they started dismantling parts, such as metal grates, windows, doors or parquet. As a consequence of this neglect and outright destruction, in June of 1949, a 25-meter wall section of the highly damaged riding school collapsed, and a request was made to demolish it entirely. The castle in the 1950s. The whole of this decade is characterized by the futile attempts of restoration professionals, meaning the Romanian Historic Monuments Commission and later Directorate, to save the building ensemble and to insist that those responsible for the destruction and neglect to bear the financial burden of a restoration. On the left, we can see the surveys of architecture students from 1955, which documents the state of the castle, half in ruins, half in use. After taking over the buildings, the Bonsita Agricultural Machinery and Tractor Station left the burned down part, seen on the left side of the survey, in ruins and operated administrative offices and housing for employees in parts that could still be used, as well as a canteen in the kitchen building, seen at the bottom right corner of the survey, and intended to create a workers' club in the former stables, seen at the upper right part of the survey. The Monuments Commission sent out experts several times to assess the situation, who found the following that the carved decorations and statues of the castle were gradually disappearing or were found on the ground around the castle, that parts of the castle were in a pre-collapse state, that the buildings were not guarded at all and thus were free to loot, so the local population used the building as an open quarry for construction materials, that unused rooms were occupied by people and turned into homes, but also that the systematic looting of the castle was continued by the employees of the Agricultural Machinery and Tractor Station as well, who carried out unauthorized demolition and intervention works and appropriated the remaining furnishings and collection pieces, such as bronze statuettes, medals, lamps, and so on. Although the monument professionals tried to force the Ministry of Agriculture to take responsibility for the care and maintenance of the building, the gradual destruction of the castle continued. Moreover, an investigation revealed that 19 cubic meters of wood had been illegally cut from the castle park. In 1954, the Romanian Historic Buildings Directorate reported that a large number of historic monuments were, quote, misused, being occupied by various institutions without official approval from any state body being exposed to destruction due to their improper use, modified and transformed inappropriately." End of quote. In order to remedy this state of affairs, it was necessary that these misused buildings be quote, immediately taken from the use and inventory of those who use or own them, and for these to bear the cost of restoration work according to the damage caused. End of quote. Thus, the case of Banfi Castle was not unique but this was a generalized situation throughout the entire country. And then, on the 2nd of May, 1956, tragedy struck. During a storm, the riding school wall collapsed entirely, along with its statues and stone-framed entrance, causing the death of two people. After arriving at the castle, a delegate of the Monuments Directorate found the rubble and stone fragments from the collapsed wall gathered in the castle courtyard. Meanwhile, children were playing on the stable walls and tin roof, endangering themselves and others. He also noted that further material kept disappearing from the site, such as stone wall facing and steps. To sum up the generalized crisis by the end of the 1950s, I would quote architect Richard Lieblich, who in 1958 found the castle, quote, in a lamentable state, representing a disaster for the history of Transylvanian architecture, a disgrace for the local bodies that take care of it, 
and a load on the conscience of the architects and people of culture from this community. End of quote. Watch the second video for the end of this story.